then, welcome to the standpoint. That's the name Joyce Bawa Mokhtari. Ring a bell. Yeah, I'm sure most of you will mention NDC. Former Deputy Minister, politics. President John Muhammad's communications. I mean, so many things. But today, we are going behind the politics. Beyond the politics. Who is Joyce Bawa Mukhtari, a young woman I admire, have admired for so many years. I call her sis. We click on so many fronts. And today we are going to celebrate her on the standpoint. It's long overdue. She's dodged me for a long time. But today I've got her. We are going to dissect her. <laughs> All right, then. so welcome to The Standpoint. You are in for a program. It doesn't matter your political affiliation. A woman who is an achiever, who is a goal getter, who is a voice, is someone you need to learn from. And I'm ready to learn from her today. Welcome to The Standpoint. And let me say thank you to Brie Redra for this amazing dress. My makeup product by Note Cosmetics, beautifully applied by... Glow underscore in underscore the underscore dark gh. And then, of course, my hair. She styled my hair as well. But I braid my hair all the time from Auntie Alice's place at Che Ado. Yes. Behind the trade fair. My shoe is by the one and only, the only place you get quality leather shoes. That's Awos Unisex Boutique at Tesano, Jowulu, and Osu. For the month of May, you get 20% discount on all other products that you buy. Quality Italian leather. That's the place to be. We'll be back. Welcome back to the standpoint. Yes, I know you are anxious by now. We are going behind, in fact, beyond the politics. The Joyce Bawa Mukhtari that everybody knows. Who is she without the politics? When you take away the politics. This is the month that we celebrate mothers. Not just biological mothers, but people who have mothered, mentored, role modeled. Well, well, let me say thank you to our sponsor. That's for this month of May. Our Wolves Unisex Boutique. They are at Tesano, Jowlu, and Usu. And for this month, just walk in there. Tell them you heard of them on the standpoint. And you get, yes, 20% discount. 20% discount. And you deal in all quality leather, Italian leather shoes. You heard her the other time when she was on the standpoint. She said, leather, breathe. And it's actually good for your legs and for your foot. But hey, my guest today is um, somebody before we became close at that mat. Known of her. Wondered who she is. What makes her tick. How she brays into the political scene. But hey, she's here. She's made her mark. Still making her mark and a force to reckon with. Joyce Bawa Mukhtari is a lawyer and special aide to former President John Mahama. But today we are going to find out a bit more about her. Finally, welcome to the standpoint. Thank you. Thank Akwaba. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you here. An absolute pleasure. Finally. Yes. How have you been? I've been great. I've been great. How's um, motherhood treating you? Oh, it's been a fantastic journey. How, how, how are you managing it? Because um, there's a gap. Huge gap. Between your first child yes. and these triplets. Yes. Mienza, in Tasa. Yes. Yes, in Tasa. That was the first time I heard that expression. Yes. 15 years. 15 years. Yes. And so my elder son, Kamil, is actually taking his IGs this year. Wow. Yes, he's, so over, he's, he's, he's over now. six foot and he's 15 now. He's a <laughs> big, big boy. Oh, my proper boyfriend. <laughs> I mean, he's no longer my handbag because I can't put him in my bag anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you managing the triplets with your busy schedule? Well, if they, I think they couldn't have come at a better time. I think that we are more settled now. 
our son is much older, we probably have a little bit more time to on our hands. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, I won't call it managing, I think we're literally enjoying the spirit and uh, we're making the very best out of it. You know, sometimes, no matter how busy we are, yeah. we ought to make time. And I think it's not how much time you spend with the kids, it's the quality of time you spend with them. Mm. And of course, as working mothers, we can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. So certainly you need some support. And I think for the second time around, we have been very, very lucky. Mm. But were you expecting triplets? No, I had no idea that they were going to be triplets. Absolutely not. So how did you feel? Well, initially I had some reservations, but I think now I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I think initially I even thought about, okay, maybe somebody out there probably would want to have one of them. Mm. Because generally all we're looking for was just one more. One. Yes. But I think that in everything that God does for us, he does it for a reason. I think having the three of them is almost like living with three different personalities. Mm. Yes. They are amazing how babies. many girls how many boys there's two girls and a boy two girls and a yes. boy so now you have two boys two Can girls you imagine that and i'm actually a mother of four mother of yes. four it still takes getting used to <laughs> you know i know right yes. from mother of one then yes, suddenly yes, yes, you're yes, mother of yes, four yes 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 but i think it's been an awesome journey and you know i think that that's a reclusive man i married the kids have totally changed and humbled him <laughs> i mean completely <laughs> You know, he's one of those men who is always stuck in one research or the other. other. And then, of course, COVID had happened. Mm -hmm. So he was forced to return to Ghana and stay here mm -hmm. full time. Right. And he has this bad habit of literally locking himself up in the study. I mean, <laughs> he can go in there at 4 a.m. and probably be there till about maybe 8 p.m. Yeah. If you see him walking around, it means he's looking for something to eat or to drink. <laughs> in recent times, the kids have discovered there is always somebody in that office. office. Mm -hmm. So all three of them will walk towards the door mm -hmm. and you, they would literally start banging on the door. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he's on a long call, a Zoom call. He's probably even in a meeting or leading a meeting and then he would suddenly just hear them knocking simultaneously <laughs> and there's no order to the knocks. Everybody just knocks and then they start mimicking whatever it is they're doing. Right. And I get home and he says, ah, you know, now they know. They literally lock, knock on the door. I said, yeah, about time. <laughs> You know. Somebody, yes. yeah, this one yes. say you have met your oh, meters. Yes. And the, this one is met yes, his meters. Yes, yes. And the best time is he has a way of playing music and getting them to dance till they are so tired, they so they will sleep. And you should see him as soon as he walks out, they start nodding because when they see that they know that it's time for music. It's so <laughs> it's it's been a totally different experience for both of us. Mm. Yes, and we are all happy for you. Oh, you kept yes. it under wraps for you know. Well, you know that for years we had been trying to add on to the family. We had tried all sorts of interventions and somehow we were not so lucky. And then eventually when we knew that this had actually worked for us, yeah. first you are in a very public space. Yeah. You also have many other considerations. You have your family, you have work, you even have your son to think about. And of course you have his own environment as well. I think we've been very lucky in the sense that Kami had always hoped that you'd have siblings. Okay. Yes. And so for months and for years, he'll keep asking. And uh, I think eventually when we sat with him and told him that this was what we were expecting, I sensed his joy. I sensed his pride. And I knew then that it was the right thing to do. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me step aside from the family and ask you, when you told your boss that you have <laughs> triplets, what was his first comment? I mean, he was totally shocked. Because <laughs> I know he has a very yes. good sense of, yes. that's the uh, no, former no. president, John Ryan, and, he has and, a very and, good and, sense and, of humor. And, and you know, for months, even for years, yeah. it was a conversation I'd actually been having with his wife until Odina. Yes. Yes, but he had no clue, yeah. no none at all. He was totally in the dark. Yeah. And so eventually when I mentioned it to him, and of course he knows me very well. Yeah. You know, I'm very driven. I can also be very selfish. <laughs> and I'm sure deep down he thinks that oh, Joyce is probably a very small child. So I'm sure the first thing he was wondering was, how are you going to cope? <laughs> how are you going to stop running all over the place? 
Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. And congratulations. You. you know, we thank just you. thank God for this yes. beautiful thank bundle thank of joy. You. And you, you mentioned uh, Mrs. Yeah. Lodina Mahama yes. and yes. She, yes. She's, she, she was part yes. of the reason. I also yes. just wonderful oh, because yes. she kept oh, yes. telling me, she you know, gifted. You. Ah, yes. ha, 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 ha. In fact, with this, when she would literally call the doctor yes. <laughs> and she'll see me in the high heels and she'll go on and on and on. <laughs> well, I am still wearing the high heels. heels. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking you know, with Mr. Joyce Bauer Mokhtari, um, an aide to the former president, John Mahama. And um, she is a lawyer by profession. And um, you can tell from prim and proper. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> Giggle. Yes, I try. <laughs> I, said, I, I try. I try. You know, this is the different, you know, Joyce Bond went from the political platform, yeah, right? True. Yeah, I told you yes. today we are going beyond yes. the, the politics. Yeah. So we'll take a break when we come or we'll find out growing up what her dreams were, some of the things she had done before, you know, the politics and so on and so forth. Let me say thank you to Jules Time. Uh, Puma drinks and awake purified mineral water by Casa Preco Company Limited. Thank you to Cake Technique, Go Got Your Got, Yep Cleaning Services, and of course, Kodam's Gift and Stationery, and Stunning Decor and Floral for our plants, both natural and artificial. We'll be back. <music> Welcome back to the standpoint. Um, let me say thank you to Brie Redua for my dress uh, today. Makeup by Glow underscore in underscore the underscore dark GH. Glow in the dark. Um, she also styled my hair. Thank you so much. But I always braid my hair at Auntie Alice's place at Che Ado. Che Ado behind the trade fair. Been braiding my hair there for the past 25 years. Thank you to Note Cosmetics for my makeup. And of course, I was Unisex Boutique for my shoes. Now, do you have a, a family history of twins? Well, yes. My sister Clara has twins, a boy and a girl. Yes, and I have many cousins of mine who have them as well. So we do. And I think my mom had an aunt who had about three sets of twins. Three sets of yes, twins? Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. But this is the first time Very that... Very first time that we've had these three You've in the opened family. the floodgate. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> and I think I'll literally close them too. <laughs> <laughs> Why, nobody wants to be... <laughs> oh, well, I think that I have these ones for everybody. <laughs> yes, and I keep telling them that at our age now, yeah. these teenagers certainly will not be carrying our bags over the next uh -uh. few years. Uh -huh. <laughs> so these ones are here for all of us. Yes. yes. And it's a story they've heard so many times. Yes. yes. Well, where did you grow up? I grew up in Tamale. I was born in Tamale at the very old hospital in Tamale. Mm -hmm. And uh, both my parents at some point lived there. My mother had lived in uh, Accra, in Somania, and in England, but she had returned to Tamale as a training college teacher. Okay. And then she met my father at some point, and okay. I think I was the first out of that union. Okay. Yes. Okay. You're the first yes, born. Of my, yes. Of okay. My father. Of, okay. And then the third for my mother. You're the third for yes, your mother. mother. Okay. Yes. Okay. So from Tamale, you, then you came to Wesley Girls. So from, whilst you were at from, Wesley Girls, you're still. From Tamale, actually, I went to the Tamale Secondary School because okay. at the time my parents lived there. And in fact, my father had taught there for many years. Okay. And then subsequently, I went to the St. Francis Girls Secondary School. Oh, okay. Where I actually took my resets. Mm. And then I moved to Wesley Girls High School when my parents relocated to Accra. Accra. Yes. So wow. I'm a product of, of three amazing institutions. And exactly. For each one of them, there was a certain contribution that they made to my life. But before that, we started school in a very small kitchen in Tamale, which belonged then to Mrs. Araya Lassan. One of the founding ladies Mr. of the Ghana International the School. school yeah. She had come to the Northern region to marry the late Araya Lassan. Mm -hmm. So most of the very early training that we have was from Jane Lassan School. And she's over 80 years now, and somehow she still follows me on Facebook. Isn't it amazing? Yes. yes. These, these yes. Old, yes. older women yes. who are so shy. So it, yes. it, it always puts you in check because and you don't know who's... always does. And she would always come back with something we did 
when we are at school or when we're much younger or I'd say something, so, but you should say it better, you know, your mom was part of this or I did that for you guys or this person was even better at it. I mean, she's always, always bringing up that part of our history and I think it is beautiful also mm. that there's this tribe that actually helped to mold us. Yeah. And uh, as kids, I think we're also very lucky coming from second generation Northern parents right. who were both scholars and high achievers. Right. So we had very great examples starting from home. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't have to go through the very normal struggles. Right. And I recall that for many years, we probably didn't even realize that life was so, so simple for us. And in many ways, it has helped build our character, build our resilience. And till date, we are still a very, very close-knit family. From right. Yes. right. Do you still go back to the community in Tamale? Yeah. You're still grounded with the people there, mm -hmm. some of the people you grew up with? Very, very, very. You know, our father has been in date now for probably almost 21 years. Right. So basically, we've literally been with my mom all these years. But yes, we come because my father actually hails from the Salaga South constituency. Okay. Pembi to be precise. And he's the son of the late Yagumura Bawa okay. Yes. Okay. So I'm actually a granddaughter Lata. of one of the three eminent chiefs, if you recall. Yes. When yeah. President Kofor wanted a set of chiefs, chiefs. to help him mediate the Dabong issue. issue yeah. One of those three eminent chiefs was our grandfather. Father. Okay. He's also late now. Mm. So yes, we come from a very huge family, mm. a very large community. The uh, Honorable Abu Sakara is my first cousin on oh, my okay. father's side. Yes. And then my mother actually comes from Bole. Mm. And it is how I relate her and relate John Ramani oh, Mahama. Mama. Yes. So politics has been in your family? Oh, yes. And the different kinds of it, yes. But yes. growing up in Tamale, did you anticipate that you, you'll be in that space? Well, you know that both my parents have always been relatively very political. Mm. from my mother's advocacy for the northern female okay. to my father's brilliance and his exploits as a teacher of many institutions. Aye. We always had a certain set of values that also involved a certain awareness. Mm. One, about where we came from. Two, about why we ought to be very competitive. Mm. Three, about why we always need to give back to society mm. because it is actually how we were raised. raised. And so it has always been largely a certain type of calling, but maybe different types of it. Right. So for most times, it was always about excelling at whatever it is you were doing. And then we got to a point where both our parents became a bit more political, especially my father. And I remember when uh, the late President Hiraliman won the election eventually. Right. My father became a deputy works and housing minister. Okay. Yes. And then... Of course, there was a coup d'etat, yeah. and he went to Insawam for quite some time, I think mm. for probably a little over a year. Mm. And so I think politics has always been mm. a part of our lives growing up. So mm. it was never news or surprising, mm -hmm. but I was never one of those very extreme politicians or in that sense. My younger sister mm. loved politics more than I did and mm. even contested when she was at the Kwame Nkrumah University mm. of Science and Technology. Mm to be a whole president. My yeah. brother contested when he was in Commonwealth Hall. Okay. But yes, I was always particularly the most argumentative of us all. <laughs> I love to debate. Yeah. I love to argue. I love to question just about everything. everything. So I think I was probably the more activist in nature. Right. Yes, and right. I think that it is that level of activism maybe that has actually fueled most of the things that I've done, yeah. even as I've grown up. Mm. Yes. Yeah. But what, what was your dream then? You know, years ago when I graduated from university, my mother found the box of our books. And then she called me one morning and said, oh, Nana, you know, I found all these books. You also yours. Nana? Yes. Really? Because I was named after my grandmother. Ooh. In fact, my middle name is Adishetu. And President Mahama in particular likes Calls to you call that. me yes, <laughs> all the time. Yes. So basically she said, oh, I found this book. And I thought, ah, you know. And guess what I'd written on the first page? Oh, how I'd love to be a lawyer. <laughs> so, I mean, I was shocked. I thought, okay, how come I never saw this book after all these years? Yes. And probably never even thought about it. But yes, that house where we started school, mm -hmm. R.I. Alassan at the time was one of the very leading 
lawyers, the lawyers in the northern region. Mm -hmm. He was also a politician par excellence. Yeah. And if you remember, he actually became running mate, mate. to a Dubai. Yes. Uh -huh. So I think that must have started from there. And then a few years later, the late Justice Taylor mm -hmm. moved onto the same street also. Okay. And so he also became a very regular visitor to our home. And of course, because he was a judge, he was always a very private guest. So I think somehow, very early on, I started to think about their confidence, how secure they felt, the sort of gentlemen that they were. We were actually products of the tribe mm. that raised us. Mm. And my parents were very close to the family of the late Alaji Badamoshi. Right. So literally, both our mothers raised all of us together. Yeah. And yeah. till date, I still see Auntie Sario as my second mother. Right. And she's still very close to us as a family. Mm. So there's all these individuals who help shape and build us. Mm. And they led their lives in a very exemplary way. So you had no options but to do likewise. Yes. Well, what, what do you think has made you the woman you have become now? I think discipline. Enormous discipline. And if you meet some of my father's students today, they will probably say exactly that. Professor Alabi is one of those who speaks very, very largely about him all the time. And every time he sees me, you tell me, oh, you really are your father's daughter. I think discipline. Yes, discipline. And before politics came in, what were you doing? Oh, Gifty, I was doing so many things. <laughs> you know, immediately out of university, I started a very... Went to the University of Ghana? I went to the University of London. London, okay. Yes, and then uh, I returned mostly to the University of Ghana. Okay. And then, of course, I went to the law school as well, mm -hmm. where I was finally called to the bar. And I think that in between, I got a job with NIB. But my father was never for lawyers working in banks okay. and always had some reservations about it. So I remember on one occasion, I even took one of the jobs. I agreed to start, I think, on the 1st of July. And then a few days later, I wrote back to them and declined the offer. So I continued in private practice. So in 2007, I took up a new appointment with the Ghana Shippers Authority. Okay. And then exactly a few months later, I got a very interesting phone call that one of the UN agencies hmm. had these scholarships for women who wanted to train in uh, transportation. I mean, there I was from a corporate background. I already had an LLM in corporate law. Well, I hadn't used it much in that sense, but then I thought, ah, do I even want to go to school so soon after all of these things? But I thought, okay, let me just apply. And so I did. Then, eventually, in 2008, Professor Mills became president of this country. A few weeks later, someone called me and said, Ah, Joyce, I've heard your name. I said, I heard my name way. So, no, there's an announcement that's been made. I said, oh, like how? He said, so I'm telling you. I said, no, please stop it. But, of course, a few days later, I found out that I'd actually been nominated to serve on the board of the Ghana Lotteries Authority. I found it a bit, you know, strange because I thought, ah, okay. Maybe all the advocacy and the running around. By then, you, you hadn't worked closely with Professor Mills. You not as a have... person. I knew him. I knew many people who had worked on the campaign. I'd done a lot of stuff for individuals in the campaign, okay. but not directly in any sense. I'd never even met him. So about a few weeks later, the letter from the scholarship secretariat arrived too. But the UN had actually agreed to sponsor <laughs> me to go and do this course in maritime law. So yes, I left my son with my mom and my sister, and I relocated to Malta. Spent a year and a half there, and I think it was one of the most fulfilling periods of my life. And so when I returned, automatically you get a promotion in the public service. So yes, I became head of my department. I became a manager and became a director eventually. And so I had a fantastic career. In the course of that whole period, Yes, the politics was still there every now and then, you know, you'd meet all these young people, you'd have all these conversations. And certainly, I think that for a while, whilst my father had moved into full-time politics, we had all become largely very, very mm -hmm. political. Mm -hmm. And so when I finally relocated to Point Noir for a very short period of time, mm -hmm. and uh, the campaign was over, we all knew then that uh, President Mahama was going to be sworn into office. So I departed and left them here to finalize their 
transition arrangements and yeah. whatever else Let me take come. a break. We'll come back to yeah. that political you know, uh, space, this political journey. But I'm thinking that throughout your life, both um, growing up, education, profession, mm -hmm. law, and other decision, you've somehow made conscious effort to take the right decisions based on your own conviction and, of course, mm -hmm. based on the advice on, of others. So making the right decisions and taking the right steps along the way is always critical, especially for you as a woman. Yes. You're watching The Standpoint, and we are talking to Joyce Bawa Mukhtari, JB for short. <laughs> <laughs> JB for short, and wow, I'm learning so many things about her that I didn't know, and I hope you are too, because um, for most of us, beyond the politics, we see nothing. We only see, oh, that NDC woman, that NDC mm -hmm. woman. There's more to her than that. She's traveled the journey to be here. Well, let me say thank you to Awos Unisex Boutique. Um, they are Jolu, Tesano, and Osu. They're running a promo. And when you go there, just tell them. You heard of them on the standpoint. 20% discount is for you. Everything leather. Shoes, bags for males and females, wallets. I mean, they've got everything. So you walk in there and have it. I mean feast for yourself for the month of May. We take a break when we come back. We'll get into that political aspect of it. Um, what was the first time when she met President John Mahama? And how was it like being a deputy minister? Young then. Then I think you were the youngest, were you? Female? Uh, no, sure. Yes, for the females. For yes. the females yes. you were. Females. We'll be back. Every time I listen to her, it's an opportunity to, to learn. And it's, it's, it's amazing talking to Joyce Bauer, Mukhtari, and Jamie. The B is for oh, Bauer, okay. Okay, yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> JB. <laughs> Everybody calls it, especially yes, yes, the political yes, JB, yes. JB, 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 JB. And it's, it's, it's been very insightful. So you did all this, but along the line or behind the scenes, you were yeah. with the NDC working behind the scenes and helping and everything. How did you receive the news of mm. being um, appointed or nominated for the position of a deputy minister? You know, that was something else. I think I was on a, what? I don't even know how to describe it. One of those very long working trips. Mm. So we had been in Sierra Leone, then we had been in Gabon, then went Point Noir. Okay. And I think I had received a phone call from my younger sister and then she said, ah, Nana, you know, I don't know, but I think that there's someone who called from the presidency and they're asking for your CV and all of that. I thought, ah, what would they be needing my CV for? But of course, Raymond was my classmate and I knew that Raymond was then working with President Mahama. So I called him and I said, what are you looking for? He says, oh, you know, the mama has asked me to reach out to you and ask you to give us your, a copy of your recent CV. I thought, okay, but why is that? He said, oh, I'm not sure, but me, there's an opening at the Ministry of Transport, and he just may want to nominate you for the role of a, a deputy minister. And I thought that was a bit, you know, it was a bit <laughs> unsettling. <laughs> and I thought, okay, don't worry, I'll keep a lid on it and then let me know what happens next. Three days later, there was a very quick phone call from Raymond, and then he said, oh, stand by for President Mahama. And then he comes onto the phone, as usual, you know, going on, and oh, Ajib, it's been so difficult to reach you. You've been calling. I said, yes, I've been all over and back, and I mean, traveling within Africa, we all know mm -hmm. how difficult it is sometimes to get connection and all of that. So eventually, he said to me that this was a role he had in mind for me, and if I was willing to accept it, then the announcement will be made in a few days. I mean, think about it. Mm -hmm. So you are head of a delegation mm -hmm. on a working visit. Said. You have all these colleagues of yours with you. Immediately the announcement came up. A few days later, I come out of my hotel room and there's a new vehicle and there's a driver. And I'm thinking, oh, so no, 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 you know, the, the president has just found out that uh, you've been nominated as a deputy <laughs> minister. So they can't allow everything you to Everything changed. Suddenly everything changed. I mean, immediately. The and then they had to think about moving me to another hotel. 
And then, you know, I'd come out in the morning, I'd meet my colleagues, and they can't even sit in the car with me anymore. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and, I mean, these are people I have lunch with, I have breakfast with them. I mean, it was a totally different experience. But yes, I had no options. Were you prepared for it? I don't even know if I even thought about preparedness. <laughs> I probably didn't even know what it actually entailed. I hadn't even given it a lot of thoughts. Mm. I think the first instinct was to decline. Mm. But I remember Dr. Ambia called me a few days later. And then he said, Joyce, you know, considering you are coming from a background that has rarely, if ever, gotten this very, very public space, I think you should take it. What you should do is make the very best out of it. Mm. Do it differently. Mm. And I'm sure that you will be just as successful. I think he gave me the very, very lasting words that convinced me mm. that maybe it may not be a very bad decision after all. How did you break the news to your husband? Because you were there. Oh, you they spoke to your husband before they no, came to you? No, he had no idea. No, no, he had no idea. No, no, he had no idea. And I think he was very far away. Mm. He was actually somewhere, I think, in Seattle. Mm. And our timelines were well, quite good. very strange. So I think for days he had no idea even. And so it was when I arrived in Ghana that we finally spoke. And then he said that he had tried to call me so many times. I said, yes, I could tell that mm. he was trying to reach me, but having very difficult uh, times reaching me. So, well, we had to prepare for what was bound to happen. Mm. And I would always say that I am deeply humbled and will always be grateful to President Mahama mm. for that fantastic opportunity. I found that nomination very prophetic. I think it led me into a course that I probably hadn't given a lot of thought to. to. And I think it shaped me in a way that allowed me also to carry myself with a certain leadership mindset, right. where I built a certain value system and built it into whatever it is my parents had actually instilled in me. And I made it a point that even as a deputy minister, I would make that difference I'll try very hard to be the example that I wanted mm -hmm. everybody else to see. Yeah. And funny enough, when I was actually made spokesperson for the campaign in 2016, an election that we later on lost, yeah, yeah. it was not an easy role. Mm -hmm. It was a very challenging role. Mm -hmm. It was made more difficult by the level of aggression yes. that we had to face practically introduced me in ways that no amount of money could have paid for. Right. It gave me a platform, an opportunity to build something in and around myself. Mm. I think I built a certain fortitude. I also built a certain strength of character that I didn't even know that I possessed. The best part was that it actually redefined my relationship with the party and of course with President Mahama. So a few months later, when he called whilst I was on vacation and asked me to come and serve him as a spokesperson and, of course, his special aid, I think in all of that, the good Lord has been faithful. I think I took serving President Mahama very, very personally. I took it also with enormous humility. Yes, I had very natural anxieties. Right. And I do know about that male thing that always happens and dominates us in most spaces. Mm -hmm. But maybe being from a long line of women, mm -hmm. and uh, my mother, Shiata Bawa, is a very strong-willed woman. One of those women that you don't mess with. <laughs> and I didn't know I had anything of her in me until I took up this role. Yeah, and then I realized that I had a certain resilience. I also had a certain strength of character that the knocks were certainly going to come, mm -hmm. but that I would be able to withstand those knocks. I mean, I've built a few businesses along the line. I have also tried very hard to help my mother with her line of businesses. What is exactly? Is, what kind of business? You know, my mother actually was one of the first females to start weighing shear nuts for Cocoa Bot. She did that for many years. Okay. Yes. She had all these farms too. Okay. And then she also runs a school. It started off as a preschool and 
became uh, a preparatory school. Okay. And then my brother also runs a fish farm. And uh, I decided to establish Rosa Reality. Okay. And of course, the Rosa Foundation. Sure. And both of them are coined from my mother's name, Rosalind. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And so, Clara? Clara, pretty much the same. She actually is director even of the school. The school. And so okay. she participates even more actively than I do. And uh, I think that in many ways, these are things that have helped shape us. You know, there's a conversation I had with a young woman once. And she told me that we are actually products of our mothers. Mm -hmm. You find that most of these mothers who juggle so much to raise us, yeah. literally imbibed all of that yeah. into, into us, us as well. That's true. What is the most romantic thing you have done in your marriage? The most romantic thing mm. I have done mm. oh, is trying to draw my husband out of his shell. <laughs> and that has been a lifelong ambition. As you are still, <laughs> you're still working on that. I'm so, it's still a work in progress, yes. Still... <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You know, years ago, I met a lecturer of his. And then he said to me, ah, are you Joyce Bauer? I said, yes, sir. Ah, so you married Hudu Mukhtari? I said, yes. Oh, wow. How did you do that? <laughs> you, know, he's, you know, he's always buried in his own space. How, how do you do it? But he was one of my best students. I said, yes, that much I know. What I didn't know was that he would spend all of his life either trying to make money yeah. or trying to undertake one research or the, or the other or starting all sorts of businesses and failing and starting all over again. But you know, in all of it, I think he's been a fantastic partner. He has always encouraged me, and my friends will still remember yeah. the husband-to-be who was always downstairs of the law firm. And he would be down there when I'd close at 8 p.m. and still spend about two hours doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> Waiting just for you. Arguing or debating, and he would still wait for me. Or I'd close very late, and he would drive behind me all the way to my house and then travel to his village to go and sleep. Now, he's the romantic one. No, he's a very dependable and reliable person. Mm. In terms of his romanticism, I think it's in this level of knowledge mm. that we share. Mm. And uh, he's one of those men who is not threatened by who I am or what I intend to become. become. And I think in many ways, he's a much older man. So he's also very set in his ways. Right. And I would say that more than anything, Marrying Hudu has actually grounded me in many ways. Yeah. Kept a lot of my excesses, mm. forced me to take stock when I probably don't want to, and largely built for me this safety net that I probably never want to leave. In respect, sir, I mean, in a nutshell, she ain't going nowhere. No. She's in forever. No. And she's grateful. Yes. <laughs> What, have, what, what is next for you? What is next for me? You know, you've, you've done so much in a short life. Yes. You're still very young, yes. but you've achieved so much yes. and traveled this journey. Yes. So what is next for you? Well, I think in the next few years, Gifty, I set up this uh, boutique law firm with a colleague of mine. Mm. I'd want to see it grow. I would want to see Rosa Foundation do even more than we're doing now. Right. I would love to see President Mahama once more lead the NDC and become president of this country again. For myself, I would love one day to share a very personal journey of mine through my writings, through my poetry, most of these chapters that I've kept relatively to myself all these years. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that I will in the next few years. But I've always thought that I didn't want my life to compete with President Mahama's public life. Okay. And so I think it's important and behooves on me to allow him this space whilst we all help to get him to the point where he wants to get to. And then once that is done, we can all take a breath of fresh air and do all the things that you, we look forward to doing. To do. Absolutely. Just what have you got to say to that young girl who looks up to you, never had the opportunity to meet you, admires you, wants to become a lawyer, was to go into politics, take it seriously, you know, and still wants to keep a family. It is actually very, very easy 
to keep the right balance when you know exactly what it is you want to do. I think what has happened with most young people is that maybe they are never too certain what it is they want to do. Then, of course, you also need that family that serves as your safeguard or safety net. But you need great examples. You know, if someone looks up to you, Gifty, for example, it shows a life of discipline, a life of hard work, a life of dedication, a life of faith in a journey that maybe even you do not understand. Mm -hmm. It's the same for everybody else who is successful. Yeah. And success is not just about how much money you have in your pocket. Yeah. Success, I think, for me personally, is in the lives that I've touched in my own small way. Exactly. The young women, the older women, the business people, the brands that I've helped to shape in my own small way. Because, you know, in terms of my intellect, or my capacity, it is not in doubt. Mm -hmm. I think what is unique about me is my spirit of selflessness right. and that public spiritedness. And I think I take that largely from my father. And being my father's daughter, I love to share. I love to touch lives. And I love to be a part of somebody's success story. Thank you. It's been great having you. you and I thank God for your life. You. I can't wait to see the next level. You. Um, you're talking, I'm just looking, hmm, probably Ghana's first, uh, you know, pr female president. You never know. You go in, you know, because you're such an affable person. Very non-judgmental, you. you know. I Thank see you, you cut across the political divide yes. on social media. The, your friends, those yeah. you, yeah. you know, yeah. chat with and it's it's all about being a human being Joyce, you are a human being thank you. i say congratulations thank you, thank you very and i much. thank god for those triplets thank you i know yeah they will hustle you. you like something oh no they, they will came, humble you no no they only came to enjoy life so <laughs> there can be no hassle there so. can be no hassle yeah, yeah. there they, they have an alias it's called enjoyment everybody knows that <laughs> You know, so yeah, yes. they came yes, to enjoy. Yes, yes. They just came to enjoy you know, <laughs> that we are getting some joy and happiness yes. out of them. It's a bonus. Yes, but they yeah. came just to enjoy joy. life. Yes, and we thank the good Lord for enhancing and fulfilling our lives as He has done. Not many people can tell a story such no. as ours. Yes, no. and uh, no. to no. that wonderful husband of mine, I call yeah. him my personal recluse. Right. <laughs> but somehow I know how to tickle him and what yeah. makes him tick. And I think we found a fantastic beat yes. that works for us. And I'm eternally grateful to Hudu in particular. Yes. And as for our amazing son, Camille, yes. I'm sure few parents could be prouder of a son such as ours. And hopefully, the Ntasa will get to that level too. What are their names? Khaled for the boy, okay. Kanita for the girl, yeah. and Kathira for the other girl. So we have the four keys. On that note, I'll be back with a bit of me. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Gifty. God bless you. An absolute pleasure. And finally, <laughs> I get to be on your fantastic show. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes. <laughs> it happened. Yes. 2022, definitely yes. a pleasant year, a yes. wonderful year. Yes. I'll be back. <laughs>
When you decide to knock on doors and doors are not opening, you keep knocking. And when you know that this door ain't going to happen, it's not going to open for you, you move on to the next door or to the window. Making deliberate effort to be disciplined. You know, if you want to be great, if you want to be an achiever, not just famous, if you want to impact lives, if you want to be successful, there are certain things you can't just let it slide. You need to always stay focused on the goal ahead. You need to stay focused. Look beyond the now to think about the future. Yes, nobody knows tomorrow. But if tomorrow happens, how prepared are you? What have you got? What have you got that will propel you to the next level? Just imagine when the next level happens and you're not prepared. You will definitely wobble and fall or you fail. So every step of the way, you take calculated risk. Calculated risk. You make decisions, difficult decisions. You make sacrifices. Or for a better tomorrow. Woman, you are built for this. Woman, you can achieve anything. Woman, dare to dream. Woman, dare to live your dream. But always dare to go beyond the dream by implementing and living it. I'm a woman with super crazy faith in God. I believe God has always got me covered. But I also know he has given me wisdom. Let's always apply wisdom in all that we do. Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. Bye for now.